So again, you know, I've asked Terry to come in and just kind of let me start the screening process, go through one or two parts that I see on the range and that I can do like quick as you're standing there. And, and then those little things start to stick out to me. We start getting the ball rolling to a full screening and then it's on to Kirsten and it's on to Eric who's gonna come up and kind of go through a couple of things as well. Um, so Terry, if you wanna come up, thanks for coming. We'll do our social distancing. <laughs> so come on in frame there, you're a tall guy, so we gotta get him in frame. Um, Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, you were a six, seven handicap yeah. when we first met. Um, Terry has a long standing background of being a great golfer uh, and being um, well knowledge with several tour players, uh, accessibility to a lot of things. Um, so we went through a little bit of just kind of going through his background medically, you know, what hurts, how long have you been playing, what course did you play, got him swinging, talked to him a little bit about his framework um, and how he was moving through the golf swing and how it could get better. What would you say? Um, three lessons. Got better. He's like, man, I'm, I'm hitting it great, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm reaching that glass ceiling. So that glass ceiling wasn't his ability to swing a golf club the way we were thinking. It was his body. So now it's time to, in a sense, peel the layers back. Start peeling the onion and figure out why. So as we got into his body and figured out there were certain things not firing, not being structurally sound, and not being moving or firing correctly. Does that sound about Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get Terry to do a few of the assessment things, and then I'm going to ask one of my teammates to come up, and they're going to echo and, and just evolve this whole series so you can see exactly what's going to happen with you and your individual program. Terry, if you would, just go ahead and get into what you would consider a, a standard five iron posture. Arms crossed, good. This is just called a pelvic tilt test. Um, all right, so the first thing I want you to do is just kind of go relax here. And always remember, any time that there's pain, please, you know, just kind of stop or there's any cramping or anything like that. So as you watch, what I want to be able to see you do is you want to pretend like you've got a big belt buckle on. All right, so as we're in a natural just state, go ahead and start there. The first move is I want you to feel like you take your belt buckle and move your hip towards your nose. Okay? And then take the belt buckle away from your nose. So towards the nose and away from the nose. Good. So right there. If you can see it on camera, there's just a little bit of vibration. And believe it or not, on the screening sheet, it's called shake and bake. You can relax for a second. That shake and bake is letting us know that there's an end function somewhere in the core. Okay? And what's that important to do with your golf swing? Being able to turn, use the pelvis, and move in that way. Now, if you would, let's turn and face the camera. And let's get into that same five iron posture. Okay, good. Let's cross our arms up. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to cut Terry's body in two pieces. We're going to have a lower body part and an upper body part. So the first thing is I want to just cut this part here. This is locked in cement. And all I want you to do is be able to just try to move your shoulders and not let your lower body go. Okay. Not moving the hips, good. Okay, excellent. All right, now I'm gonna give you a little assistance. Go ahead. What did you feel there? A little easier? Yeah. Okay, so that ability to break top and bottom disassociation helps to do with how you load and unload. Okay, let's get back into that. Now again, we're gonna to top that piece and just put it in, and I want you to just be able to move the hips. Okay, real slow and steady. Okay. So what I noticed from back here, relax for a second, is instead of a good smooth rotation, it seems to be what we call like a hitchhiker. Instead of it moving right to left, it has a little bit of up and down. Okay, so again, when you think about the pelvic tilt and then how your hips rotate, that's gonna be an issue as we load and unload. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is two of the quickest ones that I can do on the range and we're sitting there. The next would be a 90-90 test. I don't know if you remember this one a little bit. So turn and face me, okay? Let's get that right arm, all right, right there, level with the shoulder, and we're gonna take this elbow and bend it about 90 degrees right in there, okay? So right there, all right, I'm gonna cross over in front of the camera, this is your point of reference. Just kind of rotate it back, okay? And what I'm looking at is this angle of his arm to his spine to his ear, okay? Good, all right, let's turn, you can relax. Turn around and face me, let's do the other arm. Okay, left arm out, shoulder height, elbow's good, okay? 
Everybody think back? Yeah. You see a big difference in the movement pattern here than you do the right side. Okay, so while you're there, go ahead and take your drop posture again for me. Okay, good. Let's get that left arm. You can cross this arm up, relax it. Left arm at 90. 90 degrees right there. Okay. Here's that point a little higher. Is that good there? Eric, good. Okay. All right, let's rotate that back. Okay, now what do you see there? Did you see how it starts to look a little tighter, a little less free? Okay, you can relax. Spin around if you would. Let's do the other arm so the camera can see you there. Okay, so get in good posture there. Elbows nice and level right there. Good. Okay, that point of reference, rotate back. Okay, now you can relax. So that 90-90 test, again, that's telling me how and if in through the thoracic, and you guys, the team's going to jump in here and probably say some different things than I will, but it is just about how you host the golf club, where it's going to move in its plane, and where it's moving in its time and space. Okay? So Terry, thank you for my part. All right, so next, come on back over for the camera there. So after four or five lessons, right, um, Terry found our other teammate, Kirsten Marlowe, and they started working, and Kirsten, I'm going to let you go through now kind of what you did with Terry and some of the movement patterns there. Thank you. Um, all right, well, so thanks for coming, Terry. Um, so I'm Kirsten, I'm the physical therapist. I met Terry um, because he came to me because he had some pain in his lead arm and he also had some pain in his lead hip um, that were influencing his ability to play his golf game um, without pain and play it as well as he wanted to play. Uh, when I first met Terry, I did the same screening that John did. Um, it actually is 16 tests that look at your strength, range of motion, balance, and flexibility, all as it pertains directly to golf. Um, so I could see if he had any movement deficits or range of motion. Terry actually has great range of motion, um, but unfortunately he wasn't using all the right muscles to stabilize um, his body um, when he was swinging his golf club. I also did a medical assessment on him as well, and um, we treated him medically for um, his elbow pain, which is uh, called tennis elbow, but sometimes can influence golfers and how they come through impact and how they decelerate the forces in their finish. Um, and we did, we used dry needling, soft tissue work, um, some stretching, and then gave him some ideas of how he could manage his symptoms at home and on the course. Um, we also worked on his hip and that it really was more of a issue that he wasn't stabilizing um, his lead hip very well. Uh, when he was coming through finish, he wasn't posting very well, so he was kind of rolling over, and um, that was creating some pain. And so with um, some specific exercises, we worked on learning awareness of his body parts and where they are and how to control them, how to use them properly, not only in the golf swing, but in other things. Um, and with that time, with time, he was building strength and control um, of those muscles, and we applied all those things directly to his golf game. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to say? I changed my posture, right? You did? I changed my stance a little bit, just modifications on, the, on the, uh, some of the foundational work uh, to provide more stability. Right, and we also worked on some other things like breathing and rib cage yeah. control, core control, and using the right muscles to create his energy, um, and some of those other things uh, during our sessions. All the way through uh, putting too, so we worked on breathing and putting and how to stabilize better when you're standing over the ball in terms of what muscles to engage and how to engage the diaphragm more effectively to, uh, to create more stability in the stroke. Absolutely. Um, and so then after um, uh, Terry's pain was getting better and he was playing better golf, you had said that you made some major improvements in your golf game at the same time. Got much better, team got fun again, started to play a lot better. I wish I could play the same uh, all the time, but I went from, it was John down from a six down to about a four, you know, point four briefly for part of the summer. I think I'm up to about a two for the start of the time. Kind of bouncing along single duty, so it was a lot more fun. So right. Way more fun for me to play now. Right, and so learning how to use your body parts uh, better and more efficiently not only helped him, you know, manage his pain symptoms, but it also translated directly into his golf swing as well, and he was able to make some there. And then after uh, we were wrapping up uh, working together, he started working in a fitness program, specifically working on his glute control and uh, his core and how he transfers energy and stabilizes 
Um, and then I'm going to transfer you to Eric, and he'll talk a little bit about uh, the TPI Golf Fitness Program that we have here. Thank you. So, Terry, good to see you again. Uh, I'm going to ask you to lay down on the mat here for me for the table. And I observed something as you were going through your screen with John. So I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you to roll over to your side, if you could, and face the camera. Go ahead and just put your hands nice and comfortable under your head. Awesome. I'm going to ask you to bend your knees about 90 degrees. Perfect. What I'd like to go through is your glute activation while performing an external hip mobility drill. So if you could, in that position, I'm going to ask you to perform a clamshell exercise, as I'm calling You know this one, don't you? I love it. <laughs> as you go through this exercise, I want you to think about your glutes activating. Right? But I also want you to think about stability in your upper body. Okay? So no rocking of your thoracic spine as you perform your external hip mobility drill. If you could, give me about five to eight repetitions, please. Yeah. As you go through this drill, I'm going to ask you to stabilize your upper body. Think about the muscles that you need to engage while you perform this exercise. And I think this is an important piece of the fitness component, is we may be performing exercises, but what are we necessarily trying to accomplish? What muscles are we trying to activate and engage throughout the process? Right? We really need to connect our brain to our body in order to make that take place. Right? Do you feel any body parts activating that gap? Glutes, the quads, and the calves. Good. Can we try the other side? Yeah, this side now. The same thing. And now we might see something that's different on the opposite side. It might feel the same. A little more hamstring on this side. A little more hamstring on this side? Okay. Now I know that you've performed the fitness screening already, and we may have had a limitation on this side during the single leg bridge where the hamstring was. In fact, something got activated more on this side. So that comes into play right now. Again, do you feel your glutes activating or is it still a little challenging on this it's side? A little bit of a more more so than it has to be activated. Give me about two to three more. And again, you're focused on stability in your upper body, right? mobility in your external hip, but also how does external rotation work? What are we supposed to, what, what muscle group should be activated during this time? So glutes. But if we feel the hamstring is something we need to work on to get the correct activation, stay put. Okay. Now there's another exercise we do that's external hip mobility. We need to do some internal hip mobility. So we call that clamshells. We call this one reverse clamshell. We're going to do the same exercise, but now keep the knees stable. I'm going to ask you to lift that foot up in the air. What did we feel right there? Cramp in my hip. <laughs> okay. Did you feel some movement take place too? A little, little hard to yeah. stabilize without thinking about it. But as you think about stabilizing, using some muscles in the body, right? So I'm giving you some general information. What to feel, what to do. But I want you to think about the muscles that you're starting to use to internally rotate. Okay. This is a move. You guys know this is a move that you, we have in a golf swing? You're right in a golfer, right? right? So in your backswing, you internally rotate your right hip. You need this to take place in the golf swing. How's that feel? It's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Okay, we got some work to do. Let's go ahead and go to the other side. Kirsten, I'm gonna bring you back in. Is that something that you've felt with or, or come across with, with Terry? Uh, yeah, in the very beginning, um, especially on the left side, uh, he had some weakness in his hip stabilizers um, and his gluteus maximus. And really, our glutes are what are supposed to stabilize and create most of our power in the golf swing um, and transfer our energy. So um, especially on his left side, the 
because it was weak, he wasn't posting, as I said before, as well as he could. Uh, we worked a lot on um, using his glutes better and so that he could finish more upright rather than finish with his hip up to the side. And um, you know, over time, things have gotten better and he's actually got a more stable um, you know, finish position as a result of it. And then therefore, he recruits less of the muscles in his forearm as he comes through um, impact as well as finish, so. So, yeah, one example of something that we can work on to improve the body movement better, get some activation of specific muscles, and uh, great example of the team approach. Question. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. And again, as you see, it is a full team effort. Uh, there's not one piece of this that can work without all the pieces gelling, uh, and, and, and it just it works great in that sense. Uh, you saw now just a little taste of it. Uh, the one thing that I want to add again is this is so individualized and personalized. It goes for you and your body and your movement pattern. So everybody's different. It's not this cookie cutter type workout plan. It's not a cookie cutter movement plan. Uh, none of that. Um, your golf swing, your body is your body, and we are going to work hard at getting you uh, stronger, moving better, pain free, all of those things. So two things can happen: you can play more and have great quality of life. Okay. We look forward to seeing everybody Tuesday the eighth and uh, Tuesday the 15th. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me here at the club or Brad, I'll bring you back in there. Thanks everybody. Thanks to Terry, thanks to Eric and Kirsten. So, so I wanna thank you guys for watching the last 15 minutes, uh, kind of an overview of what we are offering through our TPI program here at Asian Tree. One location, three areas, covers the whole body. And what we want you to look at next is, as John mentioned, the Tuesdays, the 8th and the 15th. We have availability for open screening. So those first three, four movements that John did with, it, with Terry, there's gonna be a more in-depth program that lasts about 60, between 60 to 70 minutes that you're able to do for half price. Normally we offer the screening at 125, but we are gonna offer this for $60 on the 8th and the 15th. If you get signed up through our Club Life app or through the website and you register a time between 10 o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night, what that's gonna to lead to is what we just went through. We really condensed it in 15 minutes and showed you a few movements of the screen. Kirsten talked about a few of the things she would do and she did with Terry for the medical. And then we moved into the fitness portion of it that we talked with, that Eric talked with about what he would do with Terry and showed you a few of the movements. So it's a very, very condensed version that we showed you in that 15 minutes. But this is gonna be something that's gonna improve your game and your life as you go forward. So we look forward to seeing you soon. We thank you for tuning in. And again, thank you from Hazel Tree Country Club. Have a good day.